Hey everyone, um, it's been a long time since I've done a video, but I'm happy to share some really cool stuff that I've been working on recently. It's very early, but I want to show something off because um, a couple of weeks ago now we made a pretty big announcement, I would say. It's in a blog post right here, announcing our new admin UI, a move to React. This made a big impact in the community. Um, mostly positive, but there uh, there were some reservations, people who've built a lot of stuff with the existing admin UI. So just a bit of context, we're moving from Angular to React. We've used Angular all this time. I'm, I'm like an Angular guy. I've been doing Angular for 10 years or more, like since Angular 1.x, AngularJS. Uh, I'm a founding member of the Angular Austria Association, together with my, my good friends uh, Miro from NX and Michael Ladke from Pushbased. Um, so I really love Angular. It's a great framework. It's really good for like these form over data uh, enterprise type of applications. It's probably still the best for stuff like that. But we're moving to React. Why are we moving? Well, uh, David talks about it in this blog post, right? We explain the um, the reasoning, but it's basically we're trying to meet developers where they are. Um, what we've seen is over the years, most e-commerce projects, the storefronts are React-based, right? Next.js or some other kind of React-based framework. And developers are mostly doing the front-end stuff on the storefront in React. When it comes to then um, making modifications to the admin part, they got to switch into a completely different framework, which is honestly, very, works very differently to React. Now I'm of the opinion that basically all the, the major front end frameworks are good. They can all do whatever you need them to do, but they, there are different paradigms, right? And so Angular takes a lot of different approaches than React takes, for example. And um, just from observation, it is a point of friction. Like it can be a major point of friction depending on the skill set and experience of the development team. So uh, we announced this, that's those are the reasons. You can read more into the reasons in the blog post. Um, the tech stack that we're looking at using right now is React, of course, Vite, uh, Tailwind, Shad CNUI, um, and then like Tanstack Query, basically Tanstack Suite for uh, a lot of the more infrastructure stuff, Tanstack Query for data fetching, uh, and they've got a great table um, implementation, and then probably Tanstack Form. We've not got we've not got to that bit yet, um, but we'll see. Um, Right, the idea is that the developer experience like becomes a hundred times better than what it is now. Um, and I'm not exaggerating, hundred times. I wanna show you some stuff. Um, I've been working on like just the last kind of couple of weeks on and off. Um, but I hope it gives you an idea of where we're headed. Um, you can see all this work, I'm, I'm sharing it publicly. It's on a branch called React Dashboard. Um, but it's all there. It's a, it's a brand new package. So we're not getting rid of the admin UI. It's still going to be there. It's going to be supported for at least 18 months more. Um, but there's a new package called Dashboard. That's what it's going to be called. Uh, right now, all the UI stuff is just completely stock Shad CN UI. Like I've not done anything to it. So, I mean, uh, which is good. It looks, it looks really nice out of the box. But just so you know, we've not done any design work. It's just more like getting the um, underlying mechanisms in place. And really this, this stage is like proof of concept work to um, validate the concepts that we've been playing with on how we can really bring the developer experience to the next level. So before we look into it, let's just kind of check the status quo. I'll go into the docs and we'll look at extending the UI. Now let's look at like creating a list view because this is what I've been working on at the moment, creating list views. We have, uh, we define an entity, we want to be able to list it uh, and then filter the list and paginate it and do all that kind of standard stuff. So right now with our current solution, um, these are the docs on creating a list view. I mean, we, we're assuming we've already got the GraphQL schema in place and all the back end part, but now the front end part, um, we're talking about defining a query and then we have to define a, a component, an Angular component. We extend a, a base class that is provided by the framework. Um, and it kind of, it, it gives you a bunch of different stuff and it makes it easier to do filtering and sorting and all stuff, all this kind of stuff, but you still got to define everything. You know, we've got these helpers, but you still have to go and actually write out, I want to be able to sort this. I want to be able to filter this, so on, so on. Uh, when I, when I, um, 
type a, a search term into the search bar. This is how I want to be able to handle it and so on. And then we've got the template, of course, which is like this data table. And then we've got, need to define every column and like hook up the, um, the sorting and uh, all this kind of stuff. So, I mean, it's not a terrible amount of work, but there is some boilerplate, <laughs> you know, I, I, you must admit there's some boilerplate right there. Um, and, and we've had this idea for a while. It got floated by Daniel in the community originally. Um, about like why can we not just kind of get rid of all this boilerplate and just like have a very standardized kind of set of conventions which allow us to just um, use some config to to stand in in for to stand in for all of this actual uh, like angular templating and all this typescript code and um, so we're really exploring that now and like my challenge to myself is how far can we take this uh, magical UI generation. Okay, so we have uh, we we have we're starting off with a product list view. Okay, and I want to show you what the uh, the actual code looks like for this product list view. So right here we have a GraphQL document. We're asking for the products query, and in the list we're just getting the ID and the name. This is a GraphQL document and we're passing it to a React component called this page. We give it a title and we just pass the query and the root. This is the Tanstack router. Um, passing the root allows us to then interact with the URL parameters because we like to store all the sort and the filtering in the URL. So it's all kind of bookmarkable. You can share it and you can use back and forward and so on. Okay, so this is the code. It's literally like less than 25 lines, very straightforward. I'll show you what it looks like. Okay, we've got a list. We have the name. Now, let's see, I want to um, get some more information. So I want to get the slug. Okay, there it is. It's right there for us. And you notice it, it refreshes very fast because we're using Vite, it's super fast. Um, the Angular compiler, the current version we're using, version 17, is not super fast. It's I think the newer versions of Angular are really solving that, but uh, this Vite experience is very nice. Okay, we have the slug. Um, we want to know if it's enabled. Okay, those are not enabled. We want to also get the created at and updated at fields. Okay, and they are hidden by default. I need to refresh sometimes because the Tanstack query is caching things. Okay, I have no idea why it's representing a date as a checkbox, but this is very early stage, so <laughs> there will be bugs. Okay, and now let's try something a bit more ambitious. Let's put in uh, the featured asset. And we'll have, yeah, the ID and the preview. There we go, and it's an image. Now, as well as just listing it out, we've got, of course, pagination. We can change the number of items per page. Uh, we can, the Tanstack router DevTools is kind of hiding a little bit, but we can, um, let me make it smaller. We can paginate backwards and forwards. This is all persisted up here in the, in, in the URL. We can sort. So let's try sorting on name in both directions. Sort by slug. Okay, we can filter. So we can say slug, con uh, slug containing the, string ball there we go and we have the fill active filters coming up here so we've got all the things that a list should be able to do and what code did we have to write we just had to basically write a query we just had to write the query and and pass it in um it's even conceivable that we can auto generate these queries and i'll tell you why um and this ties in with the fact that how how does it know that featured asset should be displayed as a thumbnail. How does it know that enabled should be displayed like with an icon because it's a Boolean? Uh, forget about these dates, there's obviously a bug there. But it, how does it know this information? Because a, a GraphQL document itself doesn't contain this type information. It's the GraphQL schema that contains that. So uh, the th thing that we do is that we have, we're using Vite and Vite has this 
really, really powerful plugin architecture. And I spent a while reading up on it and the roll-up plugins that are even underlying the Veep plugins. Um, and so I've put together this kind of proof of concept plugin, which will introspect your admin API schema. You just need to pass it your Venger config objects, like literally the same uh, config object that you use to uh, bootstrap your Venger app, you pass it into this plugin. Um, and so what I'm trying to do is get rid of a separate config just for the admin UI. I want this to be part of your Venger config, part of your plugins, just an intrinsic part. There's just one config for everything. So if we pass this through to this plugin, um, it does a bunch of introspection. It basically builds the whole schema and then hands it over to the front end app. And I'll show you a little bit what that looks like for those interested. So if I console, if I console log this schema info object, it's right here. Can I make it bigger? Yeah. So this object, it contains information about all the types in the schema, the scalars, the input types, the input types we will use to generate entire forms, for example, in the detail view. Um, yeah. And it contains a bunch of information about each field in each type. We can use this introspected schema data to take the document and know that enabled is Boolean. We know that name in a string, we know featured asset is an asset type. And internally we um, have a bunch of components that know how to handle the different data types. Therefore, you don't need to write any boilerplate. You don't need to write a table. We can figure it out for you. And of course, this will be customizable. So you'll be able to provide your own components to handle specific data types and, you know, customize your implementation. But that's only if you need to. The, the default experience will be that you can just define uh, your schema on the back end and you can say, OK, please generate me a list view for this. Please generate me a detail view and it will all be done. That's where we're headed. We're not there yet. This is a very, very early proof of concept, but I'm pretty confident we can get to that experience. So I want to just finish by showing you a little bit of how you would go about um, customizing things a bit more. So because it's a great starting point to have all this stuff done for you, but um, you might have some extra requirements and we can support these too. So let's say, for example, um, you want to customize some columns. So you might want to change the title. And this is all type safe, by the way. So that, that's, um, that's really nice. So I want to change the header for, from the name to uh, product name, for example. There we go, product name. And lastly, let's say I want to um, have as well as, okay, I didn't even show you the filters. No, I did show you the filters. But what if I want to have, instead of doing the individual column filters, I want like a search box, which is very common. Um, so I can define a function, which I will, I prepared earlier and I will just copy and paste. On search term change, um, it takes a search term that will be typed into that box and it basically returns the, the filter part of the, the list options. So in this case, I'm saying that the name should contain that search term. So once I define that, now you suddenly get the search box. So I want to search for, again, ball. There we go. Or I want to search for shoe. And we get that. So I think that's a pretty nice um, amount of functionality for, you know, a few lines of code, a few lines of code, not very much. Yeah, I hope you are excited by that little preview. I'm really excited to be working on this. Um, we have a date set for the end of March. So there's about a month left to get to an alpha of this whole, uh, the whole admin UI. So David and I are going to be working very hard over the next few weeks on this. But um, for those of you who were a little bit hesitant about the, pos the, the prospect of having to like um, migrate existing UIs to a brand new system, I hope this gives you a little bit of confidence that it will be easier than you might have initially thought. Okay, I will keep you updated as we progress on this. Um, we're kind of, we're building it in public. We want feedback. So please uh, let me know what you think. If there's any ideas that you have, anything that we might have overlooked or whatever, then like let us know because it is a active project and it's under constant development. Okay, see you soon.